So let's talk about branching. Yes, we all know by definition, a journey map is a linear experience. And that's because humans experience life linear, right? We don't have time machines that can go back and take a different route or something. But because a journey map combines loads of real experiences into that artifact, of course, we sometimes want to visualize that people can take different routes. That might be because of different channels, different decisions they take, or simply because different um, users have different behavior patterns. We would like to show these branches in journey maps. So I would like to show you a few examples of how you can visualize alternative routes, branches in journeys. What I start with is a very simple journey here. It's a high level business travel. And probably the most simple way to show branching is by showing different routes. So you have a high level map here, you have uh, the different steps, and I call it travel description here. And then you see route A, route B. So at this step, we see two different routes that people can take. Now, you can add this up by adding tags to it or personas like these little ribbons that come out here are two different personas. The nice thing is if you use tags or personas for it, you can combine it with other cards. So you see in the matrix lane below, we also use these tags. So if I now switch to a different filter, filter for persona A, for example, we just see root A now and the associated data from it. Like that, we can switch between different branches in a journey map, not comparing them, but really focus on this one journey. If you like to compare, you go back to the visual that I started with, where you actually see all the different routes. And this example, we only have two. And a tip, by the way, is on a journey map, be really careful with how many branches you show. I recommend to not add more than five because with every alternative route on a map, you lose on empathy, less empathy because you have more alternatives. If you have more than five, at some point, the journey map becomes a process map and you actually lose the depth of the journey. Now, other ways to visualize that is switch to another view here is to use nested journeys. So link sub-level journeys into it. And that becomes really interesting if, for example, people use different channels and the governance structure in your organization is that different teams are responsible for the different channels. Now, you don't want that two, three, four teams work on the same journey map because it increases the complexity to align between them. If one does changes on it, they need to check with the others if it's okay to do this change. So if there are different teams responsible for the experience on different channels, maybe split it up in two different journeys. Use the high level map to nest these journeys into it and show that, yes, we have this one step, but there are actually two different alternatives to it managed by different teams. Now, I would like to show you a last version of it and that is one of my beloved lanes in a journey map that i think is still underused it is the what if lane or the scenario lane and it's a very simple thing but if you have one journey so let's stick to route a now you add a lane to it and basically for each step you simply add what are alternative things that could happen here what if this is happening? What if that is happening? Now, on the one hand, it gives you a backlog for future journeys that you want to map or future research you want to be doing. You could even quantify it and say, how often are these things happening? But it also gives you the answer to the question you might get from colleagues if they look at that and say, well, I know another scenario and this is not reflected in your map. So with a what if lane, you can simply add it there and say, yes, we think of it, but it's actually not important right now because or it's not happening that often. That's why it's in our backlog. So we are aware of it, but we don't focus on it yet. So these were a few ways how to handle branching in journey maps. And I hope that was useful for you.